Flowers in the Attic is a 1979 Gothic novel by V. C. Andrews. It is the first book in the Dollinganger series. And was followed by Petals on the Wind. If There Be Thorns. Seeds of Yesterday. Garden of Shadows. Christopher's Diary. Secrets of Foxworth. Christopher's Diary. Echoes of Dollinganger and Christopher's Diary. Secret Brother. The novel is written in the first person. From the point of view of Kathy Dollinganger. It was twice adapted into films in 1987 and 2014. The book was extremely popular. Selling over 40 million copies worldwide. Plot. In 1957. The Dollinganger family. Father Christopher. Mother Corinne. 14-year-old Chris. 12-year-old Kathy. And 5-year-old twins Carrie and Corey. Lives an idyllic life in Gladstone. Pennsylvania. Until Christopher is killed in a car accident. Leaving Corinne deep in debt with no means to support her children. On the verge of their home being foreclosed. Corinne reveals to the children that is a young woman. Her marriage to Christopher so offended her multimillionaire father Malcolm Foxworth that he disinherited her. Now the elderly Malcolm is dying of heart disease. And Corinne intends to return to her childhood home of Foxworth Hall in Virginia to win back her father's affection in time to be reinstated into his will. Because Malcolm is unaware that Corinne had children by her marriage to Christopher. The children must hide in a secluded upstairs room of the enormous Foxworth Hall until Corinne can break the news to her father. She assures the children that they will only be in the room for a few days. At Foxworth Hall, Corinne's mother, called only the grandmother, locks the children into a bedroom connected to the house's large attic. The grandmother forces Corinne to reveal the reason for her disinheritance was that Christopher was Malcolm's younger half-brother, and thus Corinne's half-uncle, and that the children are the products of incest. The grandmother believes the children are the devil's spawn, and is obsessed with the idea of incest, forbidding all contact between opposite genders. While prohibiting the children from making noise or opening the room's windows. Only in the attic are they free to play. Kathy and Chris attempt to make the best of the situation by decorating the attic with paper. Flowers to create an imaginary garden for the twins. The grandmother comes every morning with a picnic basket filled with the day's food and. Interrogates the children about their modesty and piety. Questions the children are too innocent to fully understand. Initially their mother visits multiple times per day. Bringing toys and gifts. But over time. Her visits grow sporadic. After months have passed. Kathy and Chris confront her. As she promised they would be freed in only a few days. Corinne finally confesses that they must remain in the room until their grandfather dies. A year later, Kathy and Chris have both entered puberty. While the twins are stunted from inadequate nutrition and lack of sunlight. With no other outlets, Kathy and Chris develop a romantic and sexual attraction toward each other. Though they do their best to deny their feelings. The grandmother catches Chris staring at a half-dressed Kathy and punishes the children by cutting off their food supply for over two weeks. While the children pray their mother will reappear in time to save them. On the verge of starvation. Kathy and Chris decide to escape with the twins to find help. Before they can go through with the plan. The grandmother begins bringing food again. Including a rare treat of powdered sugar donuts. Soon afterwards. All the children begin to complain of constant minor illness. Another year passes. After an absence of several months. Corinne visits the children. Explaining that she had been on a European honeymoon with her new husband. Bart Winslow. 
Kathy and Chris are furious. But fear Corinne will abandon him permanently if they confront her. Realizing that the twins' health is declining, Chris and Kathy decide to escape. Chris creates a wooden skeleton key. Over the next several months, he and Kathy take turns slipping downstairs to their mother's suite to steal cash and jewelry to fund their lives outside. One night, Kathy discovers her sleeping stepfather and kisses him. When Chris learns of the kiss, he rapes Kathy in a fit of jealousy and rage. Afterwards, he is overcome with remorse. While Kathy feels guilty and conflicted about the act due to her love for Chris, Corey becomes deathly ill. Kathy begs Corinne to take him to a hospital. But Corinne hesitates. Kathy, enraged, tells her that if she does not act to save Corey's life, Kathy will reveal their existence to the grandfather. Corinne finally takes Corey away, but returns the following morning to inform the children that Corey died of pneumonia. The children are devastated, with Kathy left wondering if Corey's death is God's punishment for her sexual encounter with Chris. Chris resumes stealing from their mother's rooms, only to discover Corinne and Bart have left Foxworth Hall permanently, eavesdropping on the servants. Chris learns their grandfather died a year ago and that the grandmother has been leaving food contaminated with rat poison in the attic due to a mouse infestation. Chris connects this with the donuts they are being fed and realizes Corey died of arsenic poisoning. The three remaining children finally leave Foxworth Hall to catch a train to Florida. At the station, Chris reveals he discovered Corinne's inheritance is conditional upon her having no children from her first marriage. And she, rather than the grandmother, was the one who most likely poisoned them. Chris and Kathy decide against contacting the authorities as their main concern is to stay together. But Kathy vows that one day she will make Corinne pay for her crimes. Characters. Catherine Lee, Kathy, Dollinganger. The protagonist and narrator of the novel. Kathy is the second child and older daughter of Christopher and Corinne. She becomes an accomplished ballerina and later a novelist during their time in the attic. She becomes romantically attracted to Chris. Her brother, Christopher Garland, Chris, Dollinganger, Jr., older son and oldest child of Christopher and Corinne. Chris is the older brother of Kathy, Corey, and Carrie. He is an overachiever and later becomes a doctor. During their time in the attic, he becomes sexually attracted to Kathy. Corey Dollinganger, twin brother of Carrie and younger brother of Kathy and Chris. The quiet one of the twins. Corey is introverted but musically talented. He becomes ill during their time in the attic and dies from arsenic poisoning at the hands of his mother. Carrie Dollinganger. Twin sister to Corey and the younger sister of Kathy and Chris. Prior to Corey's death, she is an extroverted girly girl. But after Corey dies, she refuses to speak for months. Corrine Dollinganger. Nay Foxworth. Mother of Chris. Kathy. Corey. And Carrie and widow of Christopher Dollinganger eventually becomes an antagonist in the story when she tries to kill her children in order to gain her father's inheritance. She marries her father's attorney, Bart Winslow, later on and loses interest in her children and late husband, Bartholomew, Bart, Winslow, second husband of Corrine. He is a trophy husband and marries her, thinking that she does not have any children. Kathy is shocked to discover that he is eight years younger than Kareen. Olivia Foxworth. Nay Winfield. Wife of Malcolm Foxworth. Grandmother of the Dollinganger children. Cousin of John Amos. Olivia and Malcolm are co-antagonists in this book. Malcolm Neil Foxworth. 
father of Corrine and grandfather of the Dolinganger children. Husband of Olivia. He is described both as having a heart condition and as heartless. He dies during the story. Though Chris and Kathy do not learn this until the end. He was also the older half-brother of the children's father. Christopher Dollinganger. Senior. Corrine's first husband. Father of the children. He was Malcolm's younger half-brother. Making him Corrine's half-uncle. He is described as a wonderful father who could not bear to be separated from his children for longer than five days. He is killed in a car accident on his birthday at the beginning of the book. John Amos. A butler to the Foxworth family. Olivia's cousin. Chris overhears horrible information from him during one of Chris' expeditions to steal from his mother. Awards. In 1993, Flowers in the Attic was awarded the Secondary Bilby Award. In 2003 the book was listed on the BBC's The Big Read poll of the Ooks 200 Best Loved Novels. Adaptations. In 1987, the book was adapted into a film of the same name starring Louise Fletcher, Victoria Tennant, Christy Swanson and Jeb Stewart Adams and directed by Jeffrey Bloom. A second adaptation was released on January 18, 2014, on the Lifetime Network starring Heather Graham as Corrine and Ellen Burstyn as the grandmother, with Kiernan Shipka as Kathy, Mason Dye as Christopher, and directed by Deborah Chow. The film received mixed reviews but critics praised Ellen Burstyn's performance. The book was adapted into a stage play by V. C. Andrews's ghostwriter, Andrew Niederman, in the form of an e-book and was published by Pocket Star. The stage play was released in October 2014 and is 80 pages in length. In August 2015 the stage play received its world premiere production in New Orleans. Louisiana. The play, which received positive reviews, was produced by C. M. On Stage, a production company and was directed by Christopher Bentevenia. Controversy. The depiction of incest between an adolescent brother and sister in the novel has led to its being banned in certain areas at different times. Charaho High School in Rhode Island removed it because it contained offensive passages concerning incest and sexual intercourse. In 1994, it was removed from the Oconee County, Georgia School Libraries due to the filthiness of the material. In her original pitch letter to her publisher, Andrews claimed that the story being the novel was not truly fiction, leading to long standing. Rumors that the novel may have been based on true events. For many years, there was no evidence to support this claim. And the book was passed off as fiction. Nonetheless, the official V. C. Andrews website claims to have contacted one of Andrews' relatives. This unidentified relative claimed Flowers in the Attic was loosely based on a faintly similar account. While at the University of Virginia Hospital for Treatment, Dot she developed a crush on her young doctor. He and his siblings had been locked away in the attic for over six years to preserve the family wealth. References